Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this 3D gyroscope effect. So the basic mechanics of it are pretty simple, but there are some interesting techniques involved in creating the entire scene. So let's make a start on it. So the first thing we're going to do is to come to the shape menu and use the shape ellipse. So this is what it looks like. Come to the single view. We don't want solid. We want a border width of 0 0.01. Then what we want to do is we want to turn this into a 3D object and we can do that using the extrude node, this one here. So let's have a look at that. You see it's turned it into a 3D object, that's good. We're going to have an extrude depth of 0 0.04. Now what happens with the extrude, if we look around at the side, is that it pushes the 2D geometry forward by the amount of the extrude depth from 0. And you'll notice that the pivot is not in the center and indeed the object is not in the center. And we just need to adjust for that. We need to move it back on Z by half the distance of the extrude, so 0 0.02 like that. And we come, need to come to the pivot and we need to move that Z pivot to 0 0.02. And now hopefully you can see we were lined up in the center of the object with our pivot. And this is going to be important for what we do later on. So the next thing I want to do is I want to animate this. So I'm going to add a 3D transform. Let's look at that. And what we're going to animate is the X rotation. And we're going to do that with a simple expression. So right click, add expression. And the expression is going to be sine, S-I-N, open brackets, time divided by 48, close brackets, times 360. So what we're doing there is we're slowing time down and then we are setting the amplitude of our rotation. So it's going to rotate through 360 degrees. So it's rocking backwards and forwards through 360, being driven by that sine function. So then what we can do is we can add a 3D duplicate node. So let's add that and let's look at it. So what I'm going to have is 12 copies. And the way I'm going to do this is with the time offset. So I'm going to enter a time offset of negative three. And all of a sudden you can see we've got multiple instances. They're all offset by three frames. I'm also going to come down to the scale and set that to 0.93 so that the duplicates get progressively smaller. So then let's add a 3D merge. Let's add a 3D camera going into the merge. Let's add a 3D renderer. Let's look at the 3D renderer. So come back to our camera. Let's just set its position. I'm going to go for two on Z there, just so it's, it's framed up like so. Then I'm also going to add a three point light with the merge selected. So that adds it to the merge. Just going to set my renderer to show lighting and you can see that light is right in the center now. I'm just going to make this a little bit sort of yellowy just by reducing the blue, something like that. Then I'm going to select the merge, add another three point light. Let's move that over to the left here because I want this to come from the left. So negative one on X and positive one on Z. Let's come over and make it linear decay and let's just reduce that intensity down to about half, I think. And let's copy that light. And with the merge selected, let's paste it. Let's move it over to the right because this is going to be the right hand light. Set its X position to one and its Z position to negative one. And let's increase the intensity of that a little bit more to say 0.75. So I'd like to make this a little bit more interesting and I can do that by coming back to the extrude and giving it a bevel. So let's come to the controls for that. Let's go for 0 0.002 for the bevel of depth and 0 0.001 for the bevel width. And you can see we've now got a bevel on there. Just that little bit of extra detail I think is going to help. What I also want to do is to add some studs around the outside of the main ring. So what I'm going to do is add a 3D shape. I didn't actually want to merge that, so let's take that 3D merge away. Just actually delete the 3D merge. 
So the shape wants to be a sphere. Let's pipe it into the main 3D merge like that so we can see it. It's absolutely huge. Let's go for, I think, 0 0.01 for the size. No, 0 0.015, I should have said. Let's move it over on X, so negative 0.25, and you'll see it's now sitting there. And then what we can do is we can duplicate it to get a ring of these studs. So let's add a 3D duplicate, and then we need to rotate it on the Z axis. So let's rotate it through 90 degrees and let's have four copies. And if I come back to the first frame, you, you should be able to see them all. We don't actually want them to come through the geometry here onto the other side. So we can fix that by coming back to the shape and the controls. And let's set the angle end to 180 and then come over to the transform. And in the rotation, let's set that Y angle to negative 90. Now, hopefully you can see those studs are just on the outside. They're not coming through. So the other problem we have is that the studs are not actually rotating with the main circle. So let's, after that 3D duplicate, add another 3D transform. So let's come to our original animation here, the transform 3D1. Let's copy that. X expression, so command C. Let's come to this transform and let's add an expression to the X and paste it in. I could probably have done that with an instance, but never mind. I've, uh, I've committed to that now. And you can see that those are now rotating along with everything else, which is good. Let's now add a material. So I'm going to add a Cook Torrance shader. I'm going to add this to the extrude for the ellipse. So bring it in here. Let's also add it to that shape there, which is our studs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a texture. So loader, and I'm going to navigate to my assets folder and bring in the thing called 4K Metal. I'll give you a link to that. So we're going to add this to the Cook Torrance as a specular intensity map. But to do that, we need to add a luma here. So drop that in there after the texture. And then let's add this to the Cook Torrance to the specular intensity like so. And then let's just come to back to the luma here and bring that high value down to about 0.5. Let's come back into the Cook Torrance. Let's open up the specular. Let's turn off Do Fresnel. And let's maybe just turn the roughness down a little bit like so. Now, the problem we have here is that the mapping is not very nice and we need to fix that. We're not really worried about our studs, but I am worried about my main ring. So I'm gonna to come to that extrude there, and I'm going to add a UV map node immediately after it. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So it, currently it's set to planar, but I think we're gonna be better off if we switch to cylindrical and then select a Z as the axis. And you can see now that the UV map is kind of running in the right direction in relation to our ring. All we need to do is kind of scale it down to where we need to be. So I'm going to set the X and Y to 0.5 and that Z value, I think, to something like 0.2. And you can see that our UV map is now sort of mapping pretty well. Actually, let's make that 0.1 instead. And that's that's even better. So if we now come to look at the mapping, we've just got a much nicer result here. So I'm just going to come back into the Cook Torrance and I'm going to reduce that roughness even more down to something like 0.15 just so we get it nice and shiny. Maybe two, that's too much. Let's go for 0.2. Next I want to add a sphere in the middle, kind of like a light emitting sphere. So I'm going to click on the flow area so nothing is selected. I'm going to add a 3D shape and I'm going to set this to sphere. And I'm going, to, I'm going to have a 3D merge after that because I actually want to render this separately from the rest of it. And it'll become obvious why in a second. And I also want to make sure that I've piped my camera into that 3D merge over there. And then I'm going to copy that 3D renderer, paste, and just bring the new 3D merge into the 3D renderer. And so now there's our huge shape. And what we need to do is we need to scale it down. So I'm going to go for, I think, 0.1. It's going to be good. And what I want to do here is I want to come to the renderer and turn off the lighting. 
And what that's going to do is make it self-illuminated. So it's not actually going to be affected by any of the lights. It's going to be nice and bright. Also just want to come back to the shape and material. And let's just reduce the blue a little bit just so we get a little bit of kind of yellow in there. And now I can combine these two using a merge. So I'm just going to drag them over like that. Now the thing is it's it's a 2D combine that we've done here. And if I take my camera, I'm just going to set up my camera slightly differently. I'm going to add an expression to the Z pivot and I'm going to pick whip the Z translation and I'm just going to add a negative sign to the Z pivot. This is really useful to do because it means now we can rotate and we can see exactly what's going on. So then I want to set up both of these renderers and enable their Z output channel. Controls, output channel, enable the Z. And then in the merge, we can come to channels and we can enable depth merge. And you can probably just see what's happened there. Hopefully you can see, you can just see a slight difference there that actually now we've got a, a true 3D composite rather than they're kind of just 2D planes flat against each other. And you can see that that is now nestling nicely inside the 3D geometry because we've done that 3D merge. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a background and I'm going to merge what we've got over that background. So I'm going to come to the background and I'm going to switch the type to gradient. And I want to click on the white and let's make it something like this. And then let's just take these controls here. I just want to make that top left brighter. So, so something like this. So I just want to come back to my Cook Torrance shader here. And I think what I also want to do is add the metal to the diffuse input of the Cook Torrent. Let's add it to the diffuse color. Now, because my texture is not actually tileable, you can probably see we've got a, a rather unattractive line running down the center here. And we can just come back into our UV map, rotation, and rotate it through 90 degrees on Z. And that's kind of hidden it around the side. And that's gonna be a, a better solution, I think. So I think this is gonna look a little bit better if I just color correct that a diffuse map a little bit. So I'm going to add a brightness contrast. I'm going to drop it in there. That's the diffuse path. And I'm just going to reduce the contrast like this. A couple of other things I want to do. I want to add a glow. So let's add it before the merge onto the background, I think. So let's add a glow in there. Maybe just increase the glow size to 20 and maybe reduce the blend down to 0.15. And then let's also come to the camera and set up an animation. So I think I'm gonna go for something like 480 frames for my total duration. Let's come to the first frame. Let's keyframe the Y rotation and let's also keyframe that Z translation. So the Y rotation, I'm gonna go for negative 30 and that Z translation, I'm gonna go for one. I'm going to come to the end and I'm going to set that Z position to two and the Y rotation to 60. And the only other thing I want to do is probably come to the spline editor. Let's make sure we've got show only selected so it's easier to do. Select the Z offset. Let's frame it up. And we just want to adjust these keyframes so we zoom out a little bit faster. Just adjust that curve so it's looking like something like that. You might decide that you want to turn on motion blur for the renderer of the main path. So this one here, you want to come to settings and turn on motion blur for that because obviously the rings are spinning quite fast. But overall, I think that's probably it. So thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon.